Yeah, how our world is changing, all right. And it really is. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We talk about Israel's three dimensional war against Hamas with Rupmati Khandakar, who joins us from New York. Welcome to the show, Rupmati. As always, thank you for being here. Hello, Jay. Thank you for having me. And it's all my pleasure. So uh, I guess the question is how many dimensions does this war actually have? As we, we counted, multi-dimensional, but I, I don't think that three is enough dimensions. What do you think? Uh, yeah, Jay, multi-dimensional, multi-pronged, and multi-factor war we are fighting. I think dimensions, let's count them out. Uh, land, sea, air, and... Uh, land, sea, air, water. Don't forget water. Oh, you got sea. Land, sea, or oh, land and, and, and tunnels. That's another dimension. Those tunnels are like 30 meters below the below the ground. So that's four. We got four. Keep going. And diplomatic and uh, social media, Dave. How can you forget social media? Because that is a big dimension that we live in today's world, the virtual world, like we call it, AI and all. We are fighting it out in the social world also. We have people who will watch our show and feel that we are, um, you know, not sympathetic and all that, but we are talking straight facts. People like to call it a war of Israel-Palestine. We like to call it straight and say it is Israel versus terrorism. Israel versus a terrorist organization known as Hamas. So it can't get clearer than that. And as much as you put out in the social media, you will have naysayers who will say that, uh, you know, be sympathetic. But you have to be sympathetic towards the oppressed and the attack, not the oppressor and the, uh, you know, murderers. So we have to be clear about that, that this um, campaign or movement is a movement against terrorism and to tackle terrorism. It's not a war that Israel is fighting. It's a reaction that Israel gave for October 7th. So uh, war is right. Israel is having a very difficult task ahead, and in the next 48 hours, they will move into the tunnels of Gaza to see what kind of network. We know that 1.5 times of Gaza is the uh, uh, dimensions of the network of tunnels that are built under Gaza City. So to, uh, to uh, reiki that and to get inside and destroy this network is going to be a big task. We have to you know, prepare for a long drawn battle. It's not going to be easy. And uh, conveniently, everybody has forgotten that three, uh, you know, our hostages still over there in their, um, you know, hostages are still not free. Everybody got angry in, during Munich, during the plane, everything. But this is actually on recorded that hostages are with Hamas. And they want to use it as a bargaining point, but they did not expect that the retaliation would be such that they would not have space for this negotiation. Otherwise, it was going to be, uh, we'll give you uh, these 324, you give us 6,000 terrorists of Palestine back. That was the initial line that they were going to draw. Uh, the bargaining was going to be that. But they didn't expect Israel to come inside Gaza City. Mm. And uh, Jay, uh, the suggestions that you gave during the tunnel episode. I think the Israeli Defense Forces have heard it about flooding the tunnel, about smoking the tunnel. So I think they're watching us. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have they have their hands full. I mean, there's a couple of things that have come out in the last uh, day or so, and that is that they when they're finding the access points to the tunnels, and they're finding some basic you know, techniques that uh, Hamas has, has used over years, and especially now. Um, Hamas has put the access points in schoolyards, in playgrounds, in, you know, kids' ball fields, swimming pools, um, all the kinds of places uh, that, that you, you, if you attack them, uh, Hamas uses that against you and, and, and uses the kids uh, as human shields. And that's their technique. It, and one, one Israeli said, that's about as cynical as you can get, because they're, forced, they're forcing the Israelis um, to use force on the, on the openings to the tunnels 
but they're putting virtually all of those openings in places where kids are and hospitals. Hmm. That was the plan from the beginning, Jay, to use civilian shields for their military purposes. And uh, I think a couple of days back, they, uh, the Israelis targeted a solar panel on a hospital because you see they have a lot of uh, dependence on internet, on this electricity, which is not used for you know, the hospital purposes, but rather these militants for their survival. They are trying to choke them out so that they come out and leave the civilians alone. But if you're going to use civilian shields, it's going to be a difficult task. Then you count the toll and then you compare. So that becomes unfair on the Israelis when they're fighting this because that, that dimension cannot be calculated. It is a made-up uh, shield that they use, Hamas uses, to uh, cover up their terrorist activities. So yeah, children right. are being used one-sided, Jay. Children of Israel who died are not being are virtually ignored. And you know, you have these martyrdoms which are celebrated and put on. There was a clip, if you have seen it, I don't know, that they were showing on um, uh, screens in the middle of Gaza the way the uh, terrorists had come into uh, Israel on October 7th. And there was cheering and applause and everything going on. Now, when you are literally in the midst of a war, the civilian should understand this is the reason why they are suffering and move out. But they are watching the footage of hostages being taken, people being murdered, and they are celebrating and uh, whistle calling. So, I mean, that mentality, we cannot fight it. Any dimension we go. That mentality of seeing Israel suffer is very real, Jay. And it's yeah. not spoken of about. I mean, you display this on screens. On the other hand, you have Israel who refuses, so many families refuse to show footage of people suffering. And then you have this side where they celebrate terrorist, um, you know, at terrorist atrocities. On screens in the middle of the street. Oh, well, that you know, um, it's really, it's really horrible, and the Israelis are reluctant to, um, you know, to show pictures of body parts and people who have been beheaded and burned alive. Um, it's it just to describe it is very disturbing, but um, but they don't like to show it. Lately, however, lately the Israelis have, I think they realize that they really have to get into the um, the public relations, you know, the, the PR war. So they've been doing interviews of the families, the brothers, the sisters, the parents, the children, the friends, relatives who have lost somebody, um, or the ones who actually escaped, not many of those. And and they have um, had them interviewed, and they talk about what happened. And so, if you go on um, the the YouTube, which is where it is, YouTube YouTube, may I say, is serving a tremendous um, benefit here because that's where you get the latest news, sometimes minute minutes old. Um, and you see all these interviews, and it's like the Israelis now realize that they have to show what happened to them. Uh, up to this point, you know, the all of the public the propaganda has been on the part of Hamas, who, as you say, planned it out in advance. This is part of their war. Um, again, very, very cynical. By the way, it is a war crime to use a school or a, 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 a you know a, a, a playing court or a hospital, a place where children or um, people who are sick are supposed to be located. Um, as human shields, that's a war crime right there. And I don't think the Israelis have a choice but to take those places down. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think they've made it clear that's one of the big factors for them. Um, they cannot let Hamas continue this because Hamas is sworn to destroy the state of Israel from the river. And that means the nobody on American college campuses knows what river it is. But I'll tell you, it's the Jordan River from the Jordan River to the sea, and that's the whole state of Israel. Um, and these guys want to destroy the entire state and kill all the Jews and, and, and force them into the sea, drown them, murder them. Um, and, and Israel is um, intimately acquainted with that possibility from the Holocaust. 
There are those people who would like to kill every single Jew for, re for reasons that are really elusive, but that's what they want to do. It's, it's, it's the um, anti-Semitism that we haven't seen since World War II. So anyway, so you have you have the land war where uh, some 300, as of my last count um, on I-24, um, 348 Israeli soldiers have been casualties so far, and there will be more. Um, and you have a situation where you you go into one tunnel, but the guy, the other, the other access to the other tunnel is right behind you, and they pop up like whack a mole and shoot you. So you have it's a 360 degree war. Everywhere you go, you have to be looking in all directions, and if you're not, uh, they shoot you. And and uh, finally, in the tunnels, there are these explosive devices and uh, booby traps and whatnot make it very hard. On the other hand, I think that the, the Israelis are prepared for that. They're going to keep on pushing. As you say, they will take over Gaza City pretty soon. And when they do, they're going to work those tunnels. They're going to go down in those tunnels and destroy them and destroy anything, any Hamas equipment and, and Hamas fighters they find there. Um, they're determined to do it, and they know the only way they can dismantle Hamas is to do that. It's very, as you say, dangerous and um, costly to do that. And here we are on day 31 of the war, and we still have a long way to go. Correct, Jay, correct. I mean, um, this war crime that you said, it's not mentioned anywhere. Nobody's telling that the access of the tunnels is in humanitarian places. Nobody is saying that this war is against those 7,000 terrorists who entered uh, Israel on the morning and shot innocent people. Nobody is saying that, you know, uh, these uh, tunnels were used for uh, housing these terrorists, for uh, militarizing the uh, movement of uh, uh, anti-Israel. And Jay, when we see protesters, like we have always mentioned, students, who get into an issue without understanding the history behind it. They yell from, this, uh, from the river to the sea, but they don't understand this is racism at its worst. They're talking of wiping out an entire race. And uh, the numbers of uh, Jews is uh, not something to be fooled around with. Every life is valued. And they are fighting a guerrilla warfare uh, with uh, um, uh, organization or with a uh, with people who literally use lives as suicide bombing. So you have such a uh, imbalanced war. One side is protecting each life. Every Olympic uh, player was valued. Here you have dozens of people who will send people as suicide bombers and call it martyrdom and misuse the word martyrdom. Martyrdom is for country, for some uh, you know, valid reason. Just killing them for the sake of shields, you civilian shields. They have the option of leaving Gaza because there is a valid operation that is going on of removing the tunnels, which can be used as future. You know, this will never stop. If Israel leaves the tunnels at this point of time, it will never stop. It will again be used as refuge and a reinforcing point to come back with a stronger attack. And I don't think Israel can afford it. Well, that's what they've said. They, the leader of Hamas had said that in so many words. Uh, we're going to continue to do what we did on October 7th. Um, we're we're going to continue to attack Israel and kill as many Israelis as we possibly can, kill as many Jews as we possibly can. It'll happen once, twice, three times. And he counted and counted and counted all the times he planned to do that. So what choice does Israel have? Well, you know, they could... They could stop attacking Hamas, but that's what they're going to get. The, the other thing is that, um, you know, this, this, this thing um, with the genocide, it's, it's a word that is totally misused. And now, we know that in the Holocaust, the Jews were subjected to a genocide. That, was the, that, that word came up. I mean, it was, it was appropriate to what happened to the Jews in the, in the Holocaust. But now the the Palestinians say, no, they're doing a genocide on us. Really? Are they? Because the population 
The Palestinian population has doubled in the last, what, 10 years. And everybody says, oh, Hamas uh, and the, you know, uh, Gaza is uh, very heavily populated. It's one of the most heavily populated places in the world. Okay, and also that, that fully half of the people in Gaza are what, children, um, below, below the age of, I don't know what it is, teenagers. And you say, wait a minute, if, if this is genocide, um, how come there are so many people there? How come there are so many people being born every day? Um, what kind of genocide is that? The Israeli birth, uh, you know, fertility numbers are way less <laughs> than what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm very troubled. Yeah, it forms part of uh, a reason why uh, we can study or look at Islamophobia, right? They come in numbers, and they come in numbers, and then they use those numbers to come with swords. And then they cry foul, they cry words like uh, genocide, ethnic cleansing. These are words which are not come from any other religion other than Islam, of Islam you know. I mean, it's very harsh. It's very, not every terrorist is Islamic, you know. <laughs> but that that is a majority religion that uh, reflects in everything. And now, I'll tell you, public memory is short. We will think of Israel versus Palestine. But it's Israel versus Hamas. And Hamas has taken such a confidence booster in this point that they could enter Israel and kill. Yeah. So that we feel that maybe they are disturbed. No, they must, their confidence level may, must be at such a high. They don't value the numbers. They don't feel the pinch of lives. They are just happy that they could uh, you know, uh, defeat Israeli intelligence or they could enter Israeli territory. Israel was on the waiting side. Is that if Israel had attacked, we would have had a different uh, program today. We would have spoken of both ways. Why? Because we have a balancing perspective in mind. But I told you, univocal condemnation of Hamas by Islam is missing, Jay. Big time. You know, you have uh, the brotherhood coming and shielding the terrorist activities unnecessarily. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If you're killing people and you're trying to bring out, a, uh, you put out a race, entire race, and, uh, you know, crying wolf, that your race, uh, you know, these war crime words on yourself, when in fact they are the ones who are uh, 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 committing these war crimes and ethnic cleansing and genocide and all that. That is the intention. And let's be frank about it, Jay. If Israel did not have the kind of support that they uh, want to coexist, they don't want to dominate and destroy, but they want to coexist. Today, six countries are just waiting in to finish off Israel. So we have this kind of uh, warfare that is waiting but their deterrent is that the world supports Israel. Every leader has come and said that Israel should win the war. Humanitarian pauses and everything is okay, but nobody will tell Israel that you get defeated by Hamas or you fall uh, you know, prey to Hamas, except for the countries who don't understand that this is um, a country who is facing terrorist attacks on a daily basis. Well, they're still sending rockets. Hamas is still sending rockets at Tel Aviv, <clears throat> long-range rockets right now, today. It's that pop-up thing, that whack a mole thing. What happens is at the tunnel access point, they pop up with a rocket and they fire it at, uh, at somewhere in the middle of Israel. And uh, thank goodness that the, the Iron Dome stops most of them, but not all of them. And, and then they fire another one. And it's, uh, I don't remember the numbers, but it's its dozens or hundreds or maybe thousands of rockets are still being fired um, by Hamas. So what you have is, A, they're still fighting. And they're, they're shooting the Israeli soldiers in the back, usually. And B, they still have the hostages. And C, they're still firing the rockets into Israel. So... You know, if you were a rational organization, you would say, okay, okay, let's make a peace on this. 
Let's stop doing those things. Let's release the, the hostages. Let's stop using human shields anyway. Uh, let's, um, let's stop firing rockets. Let's stop fighting. Here's a white flag. We give up because we don't want any more Palestinians to die. If they were rational, they would simply hold up the white flag in order to save the lives of the Palestinians. Instead, they say to the Palestinians, no, don't go south. Stay here. Keep using the hospital, even though it is, it is a, a, a target. It must be a target for Israel. Um, and, and we want your complete loyalty or else uh, we're in charge of what you do, and we want you to die for the Hamas cause. And that's really not giving up. It's only leading people to die. So I, I find it extraordinary, as you say, that the world does not recognize this obvious pattern, this obvious strategy by Hamas. They have no interest in making peace, zero. And instead, they want uh, six, seven, eight thousand uh, Hamas prisoners released from Israeli jails. Really? Why would the Israelis do that? It leads exactly to the same place more massacres. Oh. It's existential. True, Jay. I mean, we have, we have said this line before that if Israel drops the arms, there will be no Israel. But if Palestine drops the arms, there'll be ceasefire. So kind of this kind of uh, imbalance in the situation is very uncalled for because Israel is just fighting a war for survival. And the number of Jews that they kill compared to the uh, Jew population is um, something that uh, needs to be respected and, you know, hold on to. Each Jew is important because very few Jews and, you know, um, the kind of onslaught that they face and vulnerability that the Jews have means in every public place you have people who come up and think that it's their right to trash with words like genocide, you're, you're killing and you're doing this, but they don't understand that it is retaliation that is being done by Israelis. That yeah, it's self-defense, really. <laughs> And, and that's what you have to you have to see it that way because um, if they were to do nothing, stop the bombardment, stop the incursion into Gaza, they would have it all over again. So this is all self defense. I, I don't know how else you could look at it. If uh, if they don't do these things, they will be they will be uh, you know destroyed. So I want to I want to go into one other thing with you though. And that is, um, you know, the bombardment. Um, they always do a knock on the roof thing, um, and and they warn people, including by leaflets, uh, to move south. And yet there are still hundreds of thousands of Palestinians in northern Gaza uh, exposing themselves to the bombardments, which Israel feels it has to do um, to destroy the tunnel openings, you know? um, so and that and that has to be because um, because Hamas is telling them they have to stay in place, and and if you ask them, they say, no, I'm not moving. Uh, this is my country, my land, and I support Hamas, and uh, I'm not I'm not going south. It's like suicide. It's like suicide on a mass scale. Um, so the bombardment continues and. Uh, and maybe they want the the world um, to hold uh, you know Israel up and tell them no more bombardment. But that that's not the way to solve the problem. The way to solve the problem is to have the Palestinians go south, just the way Israel has asked them to go south. I mean, I don't think I just don't think people understand this. It's not getting out. And those people who went to Washington and on these various college campuses, they do not understand that this is an existential war for Israel, and all Israel is doing is, is doing a kind of um, defense. And uh, I don't understand why that is. It's, it's, a, it's perverse. Meanwhile, you have all these other factors. You have the, 
the um, you have the um, uh, that social media, which is going out and having some effect, obviously on the college campuses and in various in, in all Arab countries that that have uh, Palestinians because it's political for them. But you know, I wanted to cover with you, uh, Rupmani, the, the the United Nations, because the United Nations has been. I don't think anybody will disagree. The United Nations has been useless uh, in not only in the Security Council, which is hampered by the presence of Russia, who supports Hamas, and China, who supports Hamas, but also the General Assembly. Um, and uh, the Israelis have made some powerful, passionate speeches to those guys. And what's wrong with you? How come uh, you want to call for peace, but you never had a resolution here uh, that would condemn the massacre. Your thoughts about the effect of the United Nations? Uh, United Nations is standing as a redundant organization in these two wars that we are seeing, Jay, between Ukraine and Russia, and now Hamas and Israel. And when it's Hamas and Israel, they're refusing to put the word Hamas into the resolution that uh, describes the war. So how can you go ahead the, the Secretary General himself calls Israel occupation. It's bias, Jay. And as an international organization, they have to be neutral. As the sole intergovernmental organization, they have to put their resources to bring about peace. If you're not going to acknowledge what is terrorism, and this is a terrorist attack on a sovereign nation, on, on the only democracy in the Middle East, these are words, these are, these are very small words, but they have big implications because, J, a democracy surviving in an antagonistic environment which is out to wipe it off the map and facing terrorist attacks every day, the United Nations should have come in and uh, given a very fair resolution to this. They have the option of responsibility to protect, like we had discussed, where the coalition of uh, countries will come together and broker peace. But there is no interest in that. It is just discussion, putting it out on the table and forgetting it. Mm -hmm. The action is missing in this organization because infrastructure is available, but action is missing. And uh, Jay, at the end of the day, we have to understand that public public opinion and, uh, you know, these international organizations will not win the war for and, and will never protect. Now, instead of waiting for the same conferences and uh, uh, meetings and, you know, memorials in such, in, in such places like United Nations, there are hundreds of conferences on the Holocaust. You are actually seeing a live uh, attempt at a Holocaust. Again, 2023, Holocaust 2.0, but they're not doing anything. They, are they waiting for the conferences in the future? It's wrong, Jay. The action has to be today so that there's no Holocaust 2. It is very clear there is no two ways about this. But United Nations, with its discussion panels and everything, they do not even have a definition of terrorism in the world, Jay. This one man's uh, uh, will is another man's freedom or something like that is the motto that they keep in, but no definition of terrorism. They have definition of genocide, ethnic cleansing, everything, and they put it on labels on everybody. But they don't have definition of terrorism. Waking up in the morning to seeing terrorists in your city and killing your loved ones is the highest form of terrorism that a country can face. And leaving that is implying that tomorrow you can come back. Mm -hmm. Still hostages are there. How many times you have seen the UN push for hostages? How many times you have seen the UN say that all countries should come together and, you know, uh, hold Hamas responsible for this? They refuse the word Hamas. Now, what can you say to this? The Israeli diplomat was not allowed to enter the uh, premise. He was asked for an ID check. I mean, that is, uh, that is bias, Jay. And if you have 200, uh, 140 countries who voted for the uh, resolution, how much uh, do they contribute to uh, the working, or how much do they know about what is happening in Israel? 
that is a big point because they went in a group this if majority and i really thank vito for this in this case because if this was about majority and minority always it's been against israel and us and what is the hatred what is the uh, target and uh, you know the phobia has to be the other way but this is for people who are protecting human rights who are asking for existence and who are asking for non terrorist activities to take place when the israelis allow palestinians and israelis can israelis can coexist but palestinian people will never allow israel to coexist with them just twist it and see if palestinians were in power in place of the israelis would they have allowed funding into gaza would they have allowed uh, schools colleges to be built in gaza would they have allowed palestinians to come and work in israeli territory no they would not have they don't have tolerance the ultimate goal their suicide is martyrdom so they look forward to suicide now how can a uh, army or people fight against such a mindset this me mentality is one dimension that israel is fighting in this war this mentality of suicide and self demolition for the sake of freedom that they believe that they will go to paradise is something that you know every israeli soldier is valued but hamas if how many ever are killed they say that they will if my brother gets die uh, if my brother dies i will send my friend because they will all go to heaven that kind of mindset is difficult to fight it in no, this no you're uh, absolutely right war. So I mean it's very uh, straightforward, but one religion is promoting martyrdom to go to paradise. Well, it's promoting and... hatred first. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, you yes. have you have hatred, you know, that that is an abiding experience for the people in in uh, Gaza, especially the Hamas, but also a lot of Palestinians. They they're they're raised in hatred, and and what's interesting, I was telling you that the. Um, the Jewish uh, I-24 has all these interviews of Israeli family members and brothers, sisters, what have you, and uh, fellow fellow soldiers, uh, all the people around the, those who were killed. And one, one thing pervades in all of these dozens and dozens of interviews that you can find on YouTube is that, um, uh, that they were all into family. And they were all loving. Um, they all had a, a, a sort of a lust for life. They had plans and promises and prospects um, where they wanted to live a better life, and and um, and and their family was primary, and Israel was primary. It's such a different approach, and 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 they don't they don't say that you know that they're built out of hatred. Uh, as far as far as they go is. Hey, we gotta we gotta dismantle Hamas because they're gonna do this again and again. But but the, the mindset, as you said, the mindset completely different than what you see. It you know when you see the footage, and I think some of it is staged uh, coming out of Gaza. You see them saying, um, "We must kill all the Jews," uh, and the footage coming out of Israel is completely different. One is full of hate. One is full of love. Yes. They look at life on earth before they look at heaven. Here it is. Forget life on earth and let's go to paradise. Mm -hmm. So, two different aims. You're trying to make a better life over here. You're trying to go to the promised land. You're trying to coexist. Okay, you are also there. I'm also there. Let us coexist. For them, it is you will not exist, and I will not exist, and I will go to heaven. So, uh, it's very difficult, Jay. I mean, guerrilla warfare. This kind of mindset. You have an Israeli unit of soldiers entering the tunnel. You see one suicide bomber walking towards. He's ready to blow himself up. Now, what are your guns going to do? So uh, that is the exact mindset that uh, uh, the IDF is fighting, and oh. everybody in general. And uh, Jay, don't forget the immigration that is happening. This war is going to move to Europe next. Well, yeah, I, I, uh, Netanyahu was addressing a bunch of European. Officials, and that's what he said. And, and this is within the last day, and uh, it's hard to deny that, because uh, all those European countries have immigrants, 
uh, who are often engaged in violence uh, in in terror in terror. And uh, if uh, Hamas gets away with this, you'll see the same kind of thing that happened in southern Israel happen in, in a variety of countries. It's uh, it's what they do. Uh, let, but let me go. Let me go to a, a kind of conclusion here, and that is this: we have identified, and I should I should say that it's more than five; it's six. It's mindset. This is the last one you talked about. Um, it's diplomacy, which is not working very well, um, and uh, it's um, it's public relations and social media. Uh, this is another dimension, so to speak, of the war. And there is land, sea, air, and tunnels. Okay, and what did I miss there? Um, anyway, it's a six or seven um, level. Yeah, dimen lots of dimensions, and I suggest to you that um, you know that Hamas sees all these dimensions and operates on all these dimensions. Uh, Israel is not not so multidimensional oriented. They're just focused on saving themselves, protecting themselves. So the question is, what is the priority? What are the priorities in, in these dimensions? What should we, you and me, and the Israelis focus on in terms of dealing with the, these various dimensions in order to get to some Love some solution. Do you believe in the fact that it will always be good which presides over evil? That is the ultimate goal that we find. It has to be intolerance towards terrorism that Israel yeah, it will, you know, Israel is going to win this war against terrorism. I told you, if it was Israel versus Palestine, you would have had a different discussion. On We are not biased, we are not uh, you like you always say it's an existential war it's for israel to exist and a person who is uh, and a terrorist organization which is looking forward to destroying israel so it is clear cut a uh, uh, battle between a war between uh, you know for survival and saying yes to terrorism tolerating terrorism is going to bring about such a wave for humanity in the future if Israel loses this war, humanity will lose at such a big uh, level. We'll again have conquering by sword. So, is is it the is it the shooting war that's the priority? Is it the idea war? Uh, you know, in terms of social media and public relations. Uh, a footnote to that, by the way, is you mentioned the term "occupied" that Guterres used at the UN that Israeli Israel occupies. Uh, that is such a misnomer. Israel doesn't occupy Gaza. And Gaza controls its own self. Gaza is self-ruled. Israel hasn't occupied Gaza since it left, what, not 20 years ago. Um, I don't know why people use that term. It's really offensive because it's a lie. And so the thing about misinformation and disinformation, it's it's a big factor. It's a big dimension in all of this. <laughs> <laughs> when you see these numbers flashing, 10,000 dead, 10,000 dead, Jay, we have 3,000 uh, finished in Israel, but that has stopped because now the terrorist forces are not entering. So that number is not going to move. It's logical. But you're seeing this number increase. How many of them were, were uh, terrorists? How many of them were uh, civilian shields? Everything has to be sorted out. You can't just say 10,000 today, 11,000 tomorrow. Why is that happening? Because innocent civilians were killed in their homes, and that should not happen in the future. So there is an offensive against a terrorist organization. I mean, public memory is so short. They just look at the numbers, and they are saying humanitarian falls. Human humanity, humanity was destroyed on October 7th. Well, if you, if you say, if, if, you, if you look at uh, Hamas, um, which, um, you know, did things that were completely mm, immoral, amoral, you know, I can't think of the words that are bad enough to describe it. Uh, and then Hamas comes out with some statement they want you to believe, like the number of people who were killed. How can you believe them when they just got back 
from doing the most immoral acts that we have seen in, in 70 years. How can you believe them when they when they speak to you and ask you to believe them? You got to be crazy. You got to be crazy to believe somebody like that. Uh, it's not a one time act. It has potential for a next uh, onslaught, which will be bigger, deadlier, and you know more confident. If their confidence is not dented or they are not finished, it will come back again. And Israel cannot afford this. I no. mean, come what may, J. Holocaust 2.0 cannot happen. There and, you go. Uh, you have to stand with Israel for this because it's a war for justice. Yes. Thank you, Rupati. We will we will continue to follow it. I think it's important that you and I, you know, we're gonna circle back and uh, check out the events to follow. It's certainly not over. 31 days and it's certainly not over. So thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for this discussion, Rupani. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.